Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game the video. Today we're taking a look at a 5 color shrine deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Now sadly we don't have access to the Goshintai of Life's Origin on Arena, otherwise that would definitely be our commander, but maybe one day we will. For now we have to play a different 5 color commander, and I settled on Kyodai, Soul of Kamigawa, a 4 mana 3 3 legendary dragon spirit with flash and flying, and when Kyodai enters the battlefield, another target permanent gains indestructible for as long as we control. Kyodai, and for 5 mana can also get plus 5 plus 5 until end of turn, so definitely not the most powerful 5 color commander, but the advantage of playing Kyodai over something like Kenrith or Golos is that we don't get matched up against all those tier 1 historic brawl decks, so that's a nice perk. And for now Kyodai is still pretty serviceable, as it can potentially protect one of our key permanents, as it can both make our enchantments indestructible as well as potentially a creature, and by far the most important card in the deck is Sanctum of All, the 5 mana legendary enchantment shrine, saying at the beginning of your upkeep you may search your library and or graveyard for a shrine card and put it onto the battlefield, and then if an ability of another shrine we control triggers while we control 6 or more shrines, that ability triggers an additional time. So Sanctum of All can eventually search up all the shrines in our deck, and there's 16 total in the deck, including Sanctum of All, and they're split up according to their expansions. We've got the 5 original Hondans from Kamigawa, these trigger at the beginning of our upkeep, then we've got the Sanctums from M21, these typically trigger at the beginning of our pre-combat main phase, and finally the new cycle of Go Shintais from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, these are creature enchantments that trigger at the beginning of our end step, and also require a 1 mana payment. So let's quickly go over all of them. We've got Infinite Rage, dealing damage to any targets equal to the number of shrines we control, Cleansing Fire instead gains 2 life, Knight's Reach makes the opponent discard for each shrine, Seeing Winds will draw cards, Life Swap will make 1-1 one, one colorless spirit creature tokens. Then Sanctum of Tranquil Light can tap an opposing creature down and gets a 1 mana discount for each shrine we control. Stone Fangs will drain the opponent and gain X life. We've got Shattered Heights, which can pay 1 mana and discard a land or shrine card to deal damage to a creature or planeswalker. We've got Fruitful Harvest adding mana, and Calm Waters letting us draw cards and then discard a card as well. And then finally the Goshintais, we've got the Lost Wisdom, an 0-4 flyer that can be an alternate win condition by milling the opponent out. We've got Boundless Vigor, a 1-1 Trampler that can put plus 1 counters on our shrine creatures. We've got Ancient Wars, a 2-2 First Strike that can deal damage to an opponent or a Planeswalker. Shared Purpose can pay mana to make a 1-1 Colorless Spirit Creature token for each shrine we control on a 1-3 Vigilance. And finally the Goshintai of Hidden Cruelty, 2-2 Death Touch can pay mana to destroy a creature with toughness X or less, where X is the number of shrines we control. So those are all the shrines, and the goal of the deck is to get as many of them in place possible, as they get incrementally more powerful. Then taking a look at the other categories of our deck, we've got some interaction, so this is a section of removal spells and ways to interact with the opponent's game plan, including Source to Plowshares as efficient removal, alongside of course Lightning Bolt, We've got Thought Seize for a bit of hand disruption, Wash Away as a 1 mana counter spell to potentially counter the opponent's commander, otherwise a 3 mana counter. We've got Heartless Act as more spot removal, alongside a D Spark to exile a permanent with mana value 4 or greater, and Vanishing Verse to exile target monocolor permanent. And then we've got a few enchantments that can act as removal, with Banishing Light and Borrow Time, which are essentially the same. And then Binding the Old Gods, a saga that can destroy a non-land permanent, and potentially search up a forest on the second chapter as well. And then the new Kami War, a 6 mana, 5 color enchantment saga, that on the first chapter will exile targets and non-land permanent and opponent controls, on the second chapter returns up to one other target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, and then each opponent discards a card, and then eventually transforms into a 6-6 enchantment creature with flying and trample, that has all sorts of cool abilities. And then the next category is ramp cards, ways to accelerate our mana so we can get all these expensive cards in play, also potentially ways to fix our mana. We've got both Explorer and Growth Spiral to draw a card and let us play an additional land. We've got Into the North to ramp into a snow land, and we've got the five snow-covered basics to go with it. Paradise Druid as a typical mana creature that has hexproof as long as it's untapped. We've got Sanctum Weaver, adding X mana of any one color, where X is the number of enchantments we control, an enchantment creature itself. We've got the Naturalist, giving our enchantments a 1 mana discount on a 2-2 lifelink enchantment creature. 
then a few ramp artifacts with Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, and Mindstone, and Ornithopter of Paradise, an O2 flying creature that can make one mana of any color. Then at 3 mana, Cultivate can find two basic lands, one goes into play tapped, the author into our hand. Faber Elder, a 0 0 with Vigilance, gets plus 1 plus 1 for each color among permanents we control, so by itself it's a 2 2 but can easily get much bigger, and then can tap, and for each color among permanents we control, we add 1 mana of that color, so it can generate a big mana advantage as well. Key to the Archive comes into play tapped and then makes 2 mana of any colors we want, and can also draft a card from the powerful 15 card spellbook and replace it with one of the cards in our hand potentially. And then Mirarius Wake, a 5 mana enchantment that essentially doubles the mana or lands produce, as well as giving our creatures plus 1 plus 1. Then the next category are card draw engines, where at 2 mana we've got Nessian Wanderer, a 1 3 creature with Constellation, saying whenever an enchantment enters a battlefield under our control, we can look at the top 3 cards of our library, reveal a land, and put it into our hand. Sithis is a 1 2 legendary enchantment creature, saying whenever we cast an enchantment spell, gain 1 life and draw a card. Enchantress's Presence, a 3 mana enchantment, saying whenever we cast an enchantment spell, draw a card, and Seder Enchanter does the same on a 2 2 creature. And then Citizen Champion, a 1 3 with Constellation, giving it a plus 1 plus 1 counter and drawing a card as well. And then at 6 mana, Immortal Sun, a legendary artifact that shuts down all planeswalkers, as we don't have any in the deck ourselves, lets us draw an additional card at the beginning of our draw step, makes all our spells 1 cheaper, and also gives our creatures plus 1 plus 1. Then the next category are tutor effects, ways to search up specific cards in the deck, and we're mostly interested in searching up our Sanctum of All, which can then find all the other shrines in our deck. So we've got Sterling Grove, a 2 mana enchantment, giving other enchantments we control a shroud, so they can be targeted by spells or abilities, and for 1 mana we can sacrifice it to search our library for an enchantment card, reveal it and put it on top of our deck after shuffling. Idyllic Tutor can find any enchantment and put it straight into our hand. Moonblessed Cleric, a 3-2 creature that can find an enchantment and put it on top. Search for Glory can find any Snow card, Legendary card or Saga card, reveal it and put it into our hand. Also gains life for each Snow mana spent to cast it, another reason to include those Snow covered basics. Then Captain Seasick can tap to search our library for a Legendary card, and of course all the shrines are Legendary and put it into our hand and a Shrine Steward, a 3-2, that when it enters can find an Aura or Shrine card and put it into our hand. And then the final category are additional utility cards, where we've got a Destiny Spinner, making our enchantments uncounterable, very useful against blue decks, can also turn a land into an XX Elemental creature with Trample and Haste, where X is the number of enchantments we control. And then a Weaver of Harmony gives other enchantment creatures plus 1 plus 1, but more importantly can pay green mana, tap it, and copy target activated or triggered ability we control from an enchantment source, and choose new targets, so we can potentially double up on a trigger from one of our shrines. And finally Time Warp to take an extra turn, also quite powerful when we control a bunch of enchantments that get better as time goes on. And then the mana base is quite straightforward, we've got one of each snow-covered basic, the Thriving Cycle of Lands, We've got the dual lands from Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow, all the shock lands, and then all the triomes, the three color lands as well, and then a bunch of five color lands, including Command Tower, of course, couple fetch lands with Evolving Wilds, Fabled Passage, and Thermorphic Expanse, and then some more five color lands with Forsaken Crossroads from Alchemy, Shimmer Drift Veil, vale, and the new Uncharted Haven. So, yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing Gishoth Sun's Avatar, so a Naya Dinosaur ramp deck. And we've got a solid hand. Sanctum Weaver to accelerate us, plenty of enchantments. And it's all about being as fast as possible when facing Gishoth, as they will be trying to ramp and put lots of dinosaurs in play. So, Thriving Heath name Black means we have all colors. Although I actually can't play the Weaver on 2 with this current mana base. So we'll be a turn behind unless we find an untapped land. Could also go for a green source tapped on turn 1 instead. Just so that if we find any untapped land we can still play a Sanctum Weaver. That is worth considering. Yeah, I think I'm gonna give that a shot. Crossroads on white. Alright, did not get there on the lands. 
So, name blank. And player weaver, turn late. Also an argument for playing Honden of Infinite Rage to try and kill Drover, although if they play Dino, that's not going to work out. And I think I would rather develop my mana. And then Expanse can fetch either another Swamp or Plains, maybe. Settle the Wilds for Ramp. Alrighty, so I can go Honden of Infinite Rage plus Weaver, or I can play Sanctum plus Weaver instead to try and draw cards. Maybe I should still try and kill the Drover. So let's try that. And then I guess the Weaver doubling the Honden triggers means I could potentially deal two damage instead of just one. And this can name red. If there is artifact or enchantment removal, protecting the Sanctum of Calm Waters could also be worth it. Next turn I might be able to play it and protect it with Kyodai. Burning Sun's Avatar can kill Sanctum Weaver and Gross Drover, so that was quite painful. So this can go face. And then I can play Calm Waters. And uh, that's it, I guess. Maybe should have had the blue in play first, so we could have played this tapped. Right, Knight of the Stampede means Gishoth is coming next turn. And a Brontodon can blow up one of my enchantments. Alright, so I guess we can target the uh, Knight and then double the trigger with Weaver. Get to draw some cards. Get rid of the tap lines. And then I could play Signet, keep up Kyodai still. So we might have prevented Gishoth for an extra turn. Honden can try and take out Rover. Or can force the issue on Thrashing Brontodon. If they don't pull the trigger on Brontodon, I probably don't play Kyodai. I guess we're at 16, so we're also just taking a lot of damage on the ground. Which we'll have to address. It's gonna be an Armosaur for now. And a Savage Stomp. So they can still use the Brontodon to potentially uh, destroy an enchantment. So I could play Kyodai, protect a Weaver, and then probably lose Sanctum. Yeah, I guess that just happens. I think protecting Calm Waters is still more important. And then I wouldn't be able to flash in Kyodai. And this can go upstairs. We get to draw. Mirari's Wake, does that help me? Well, um, probably get rid of a land here. If I want to play Wake, I'll have to maybe shock myself, then I have six mana left. Can play Naturalist and Kyodai. 
still gonna be in trouble. But uh, I guess this is the best I can do. Could play Naturalist first. I think that's the same as playing Mirari's Wake first here. Play the lifelinker. Opponent goes after wake. So I can float the mana. And then I can decide whether I want to protect my naturalist with Kyodai. Or if I want to protect the wake. I'll protect the wake. And see for that to Gishoth here. And there's a Sun's Avatar. Second block like so. And then take three trample. If I double block, I guess that's maybe better, because then I still survive and Gishoth doesn't trigger. Sure. Alright, we need a good Sanctum of Calm Waters here. Probably better off going face still. Don't imagine we can kill multiple dinosaurs. Alright. So, what's the plan here? Shattered Heights could potentially deal 4 or 3 damage, or potentially 3 damage twice. Although Hidden Cruelty would have 4 Shrines, so that can kill, let's say, the Drover. Yeah, probably just get rid of a land, actually. And then... Should be able to play everything out. And then end of turn. This triggers. And we can take out either the Armasaur or uh, probably Drover is better. And then pass a turn, since this is uh, until end of turn, so it's not going to be helpful. So I'm not dead on board, at least. Sun's Avatar attacks, probably fine to throw Destiny Spinner under the bus. Polyraptor, uh oh. Alright, probably don't want to damage that one. So I can take out the Ormosaur here. Alright, let's see if we can find another shrine. Well, we did not find another shrine, but we did find some goodies. So I can uh, Kami War. Exile Polyraptor, Borrow Time deals with another creature. And uh, probably gonna play it safe and leave Hidden Cruelty back. But I can mill the opponents. Ripjaw Raptor and Ranging Raptors. So, probably don't want to give the opponent extra lands, so this can go upstairs. Get to draw. 
and we can bounce maybe the ranging raptors or ripjaw doesn't matter can kill the other with the hidden cruelty we'll draw guardian idol can go steward can find my final shrine here sanctum of all try and keep up d spark and vanishing verse if possible yeah, I guess it's going to be difficult to keep up Vanishing Verse. So I'll just play this. Protecting Sanctum of All. No attacks. Can kill the Ranging Raptor. And mill the opponent some more. And I hope they don't top deck a Lightning Bolt. Tuscodon, that's fine. And then now double Honden triggers can get the Black Sanctum to close out the game. Alright, awesome. Kami War transforms. And Sanctum of Stone Fangs gets the job done. That was a very close game. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Jin Getaxius, Progress Tyrant, and luckily doesn't counter enchantments, so yeah, we'll give this a shot. And then... What do we want to fetch for here? Either Mountain or Islands? Close call. I guess we'll go for Island. Most likely not going to matter once we get our mana fixing from Arcane Signets, but you never know. And then next turn I might go for Key to the Archive right away. Emery points towards lots of artifacts in their deck. And yeah, we'll resolve our Key to the Archive. And what do we want? Demonic Tutor seems pretty good to find our Sanctum of All, potentially. And get rid of... Could get rid of one of these Sanctums. Maybe Lost Wisdom is not great when the opponent has an Emery in play. And we can always get it back later with Sanctum of All from our graveyard. Could have also gotten rid of a Lance. I guess the upside of keeping Shattered Heights and... Lost Wisdom is that I could have played both and then discard lands to kill Emery, although Emery's not doing a whole lot right now. Potent bounces key to the archive. That's not too bad. So what do I want to do? Could just Demonic Tutor for Sanctum of All and then Cultivate instead. Yeah, that seems better actually. Get our Sanctum of All. And we will cultivate, get Mountain Swamp, Mountain in play. And hopefully our opponent taps out so we can resolve our Legendary Shrine. Opponent foretells a card. Alright, so pretty likely that we can resolve our Sanctum. Of course, our opponent could still bounce it later. And we'll play a Paradise Druid as well. And then if we get to untap with our Sanctum of All, probably want to start by getting some card draw shrines. And the Sanctum of Calm Waters we get benefit from right away. So maybe that's the pick. Attendance. Power equal to the number of artifacts they control. And we'll get Calm Waters. Take action. And probably don't need Idyllic Shooter anymore. Can play Mortal Sun to discount our spells. And then... I can still play a Key to the Archive if I want to, or we can just get more Shrines in play. Maybe even play Sanctum. 
Although I don't need to kill Emery. Yeah, I guess Honden of Infinite Rage is fine too. And a time plant. So your opponent's gonna need something like River's Rebuke to bounce everything. To try and reset the board. So ramping, putting additional lands in play is one way to potentially mitigate that. Alrighty, so first we want to resolve Sanctum of All, so we've got an additional Shrine in play, and then I guess we'll kill Emery. Search for Library, and what do we want next? Maybe some Discard? See if we can hit a Time Warp with Key to the Archive, perhaps. Get rid of Tapland. So yeah, key to the archive seems like a good first step. No time warp, but putrefy and electrolyze are both reasonable too. We'll grab a putrefy and get rid of an extra land, I guess. And then just uh, play some stuff out. And just keep up putrefying swords. I guess we also get double Ancient Wars triggers, so we could pay for that as well if we want to. Um, I guess I'll keep up swords just in case, but we can pay for one of them. Of course, doubled now thanks to Sanctum of All and Six Shrines. So do they have a Reverse Rebuke? Opponent still one man away from casting the Progress Tyrant, which is also reason to hang on to something like Search for Glory, just to get that countered so we can resolve Swords or Putrefy. It's gonna be a Gilded Lotus. And that's it, so our opponent's gonna have to discard their entire hands, and we'll get the Black Sanctum here, so we can uh, drain the opponent some more. And that's going to deal a lot of damage here. Right, opponent counters the Sanctum of All trigger, unless we pay three, but we can easily pay for it. And uh, yeah, getting the Black Sanctum probably just kills the opponent here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand would have been awesome with green mana to explore into Mirari's Wake. As is, when facing Sorin, a mono-black vampire deck. Don't know if I can uh, really risk it. Although maybe this hand still has enough potential where I should try it and... We do have a lot of green sources we could draw. Yeah, let's try it. Alright, there we go. So, probably fine to play it now in case I draw another green source next turn so I can explore into Sithis. Opponent stuck on two in the meantime. So, yep, yeah, let's explore. No green mana. So, we'll just play this tapped. And next turn, Mirari's Wake doubles my mana. We've got a Call Waters for a card draw. So, I'm liking my spot. Sorin puts in, ooh, a good one, Westgate Regent. That one's scary. So that's why our opponent kept a somewhat greedy hand. So let's wake. Can always chum block with Kyodai to prevent a bit of damage. And with wake we can easily replay it. Double Sorin. Who wore it best? My will must be obeyed. So region's gonna grow up to a 10-10. Yeah, it's pretty good. And the Mirthless now has no qualms about drawing cards and losing a bit of life. Banishing Light's a perfect answer here. 
Empire. Okay, so we're back in business. So, make some green, make some white. Play Sithis. Play Banishing Lights. Discarding Evolving Wilds. And play Sanctum. And play another Sanctum. Well, that was a perfect turn. Brought to you by Mirari's Wake. So we'll see if Ancient Wars survives or if her opponent kills it. Sovereign drains us. And they might go after Ancient Wars to decrease the number of uh, shrines we control. Nope, just to counter on Sovereign instead. That works for me. You will serve me well. And then now can play a couple more shrines, draw more cards. Ooh, Honden of Seeing Winds. Also known as Honden of Seeing Winds. Could also try and keep up Kyodai to make one creature indestructible here. Don't think that's going to be necessary. Let's just draw all the cards. So four mana left. So I could still play this and pay for a couple shrines. This can also take out planeswalkers for what it's worth. And no attacks. So I can pay for the two first triggers here. And we'll deal 5 to Soren the Mirthless, maybe. And we've got a 6-10 Koshintai of Lost Wisdom, and our opponent packs it in. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and somehow facing the mirror match, although I doubt it's going to be a Shrine's mirror. Our hand seems good. We've got Sterling Grove to find Sanctum of All, Cultivate for Ramp, alongside Gross Peril. And then how to sequence our lands. I guess we want to get green and play early. Although I guess I wouldn't be able to turn to Spiral with this hand. So I guess at that point it doesn't really matter. Maybe it's still worth it to go for green. Just in case I draw an untimed blue source of the top. And then now I can play a turn to Sterling Grove instead. Turn 3, Cultivate, take it from there. Paradise Druid. Okay. And then we want to Cultivate. Get some red mana and already have lots of green. Maybe additional black. One has got four mana for a naturalist, all right. It might be an enchantment deck after all. Although we haven't seen a shrine yet. Although, to be fair, we also haven't played any. So this turn, Growth Spiral. And then I could still sag Grove. Or I could play the Shrine of Shared Purpose. And then I could either pay the one or sag Grove to go get my Sanctum of All. I think I prefer ramping with Spiral. Ooh, Time Warp could be exciting. And then I can still play the Shrine of Shared Purpose. Could get punished if they remove Sterling Grove. But then they would also be able to remove Sanctum of All, so... Yeah, opponent's got their own Sanctum of All in hand, so... This is going to be an interesting battle. So, let me make sure I can actually cast my Sanctum of All. And then Time Warp might give us the edge. 
But uh, yeah, it's gonna be an interesting battle of managing the shrines. Of course, if they just remove my Sanctum of All, it's gonna be game over. So we'll see which one they get first. Probably a card draw shrine here. Calm Waters is my guess. Nope. Hidden Cruelty. I guess could potentially destroy Shared Purpose. Yep. I think that's fine. And I want to get Sanctum of Calm Waters. Ooh, the Kami War. That can get rid of Sanctum of All. So that's going to give us a huge advantage. So maybe I wait on Time Warp, although I could just explore Time Warp and pull ahead in case they have some protection for Sanctum of All. You never know. And then search library. And what do we want to get next? Probably just more card draw. Get rid of a land. Play Kami War. Sanctum Exiled. And play Weaver. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. So yeah, the Kami War makes a difference and getting the card draw also pretty important in a mirror match. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play facing Ryu, Storm's Edge, Red White, Samurai slash Warriors. What do we think of this hand? Yeah, it's got potential. We've got uh, Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest to make more mana. I guess we could use a few more enchantments to go with the Satessan Champion. But plenty of interaction, which might be important here. So Thriving Bluff, name black or white. Probably go for black. The Ronin hits us for two. And then now I can play a tapped Hallowed Fountain. Keep up Lightning Bolts. Next turn, maybe go for Champion before Fruitful Harvest. Mind Stone Resolves. Smothering Tithe. Alright, that's going to generate a lot of mana for them. Do I pay? I guess I could pay and then despark the Smothering Tithe still. Yeah, that's going to be too annoying to deal with otherwise. So let's see. I guess I can fetch a Plains. I guess we can do that at instant speed. So I'll pass for now. And Brunor plays well with equipment. Can Lightning Bolt him later. Okay. So maybe Fruitful Harvest plus Lightning Bolt here. Could maybe scry first, and this can name. Let's see, we already have black once, maybe second black, and then lost wisdom. Do we want to keep you? Sure. And attack for two. Still have one removal spell left for Ryu.
Right, the general can get artifacts back. Alright, let's make some blue mana. Calm waters. And then Lost Wisdom looks good. Thought Seas to have a look is tempting. I think I still prioritize getting more enchantments down. And perfect, we still get to Thought Seas after all. And so let's see here. Falf, Lord Konda is probably the most threatening card as it can maybe get something back. But yeah, this was a great curve. Finding that black mana for Thought Seas, the cherry on top. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Light Paws, Emperor's Voice, the new two mana, Legendary, Aura, Commander. So yeah, we've got a keepable hand. Turn two, Paradise Root, turn three, Cultivate, hopefully. Thanks to the Crossroads coming into play untapped. Opponent's got the Light Paws. And I guess I can wait on Crossroads, in case I can use it to scry later. Play Paradise Roots. And then next turn I could Binding, Light Paws. If they don't have protection available. And Search for Glory can get my Sanctum of All, so just gotta make sure we have all the mana. All that glitters can get a 2 or 1 mana aura. And our opponent's gonna give their creature flying. So they could easily have protection left here for single white. Now always have the option of using Binding on all that glitters, which is the main damage dealing aura. I think we're just gonna take a different approach and cultivate here. Try and ignore Light Paws early until we can pull ahead. And then we'll eventually need double blue. I guess black mana is useful too. And then play a tap land. And this can name green, perhaps. Now here he's binding on Paradise Roots, that's fine. Also removes mana abilities, so Paradise Roots not gonna do much for us. Light Paws has lifelink. And uh, yeah, one can assume that they have a way to protect it. So what are my options? Binding, all that glitters, which may buy me some time. And then um, save the time warp, or I can just time warp to hit an extra land drop, basically. And then next turn I can Sithis plus binding, which might be slightly better. Well, their opponent didn't seem to have much of a response there, so maybe they don't have protection for Light Paws after all, and we can just take it out here. Yeah, I guess we'll go for it. Let's see if we're wrong or not. Well, that's much easier, of course, if we don't need to face their commander. And now we have Search for Glory, can play Kyodai as well, if needed. Fateful Absence, Sithis, that's fine. And a Spirits. Get to find a land, might as well make it a Triome. And this seems fine. Okay, so I could Banishing Light the spirits so we don't take any risks and then a search for glory probably wanted to search using all my snow mana to gain a bit more life i guess we missed out on one point uh that's okay i'm light on white mana so we'll need to play this on white get sanctum of all and then now the hope is that I can play Sanctum and protect it with Kyodai in case they could destroy it somehow. 
Although white is more likely to exile it. Okay. Play Sanctum and pass. And Kyodai could always chum block light pause if needed. On Sarah's wings. Plus one, plus one, and flying. Among other abilities here. Gets a commanding presence. Yeah, it could be worth it to jump with Kyodai already. And prevent taking five. Opponent doesn't get a token. Or I can wait, just play Kyodai, although then if they have enchantment removal, I might not be able to block anymore. So I'll just jump now. I think that's safer. And uh, this doesn't matter since we're gonna jump. And then I'll start by getting Sanctum of Calm Waters as usual. Sterling Grove can protect my other enchantments. Okay. So what's next? Could even use a clue to draw whatever I put on top with Sterling Grove, so I could get removal for Light Paws, which may actually be the safest play. Even if it's not as fancy as getting more shrines in play. Could have also gone with Cleric to do the same, I suppose. Might have been even better. And, uh... Wanna get a Borrow Time, perhaps? Draw it. And play it. Exile Light Paws. Ooh, they've got the Karmatra's Blessing for Hexproof. Alright, that works. The one trick that saves them, I guess the God's Willing on Whites would have worked, but then the enchantments would have fallen off, so it wouldn't have been as good. So we'll see if uh, Light Paws can deal 11. I doubt it with uh, all that glitters already in the graveyard. But now we could be in trouble. Sanctum of All might get Stone Fangs just to gain some life. Although it's probably not going to be enough. I guess Kyodai can still flash in and Shumblock. Although I have to be careful that we don't die to a cave. So I think the safest play is going to be to get Sanctum of Stone Fangs. Let me double check here. Yeah, I think so. Ooh, Source to Plowshares, that's perfect. Alright, now we're safe again. And then, uh, probably don't need Moonblast Cleric anymore. So I'll just do this now, in case of more protection spells. And, uh, play some more Shrines out. Get Shimmer Drift Veil. Doesn't matter. Got a blocker if needed. And, uh, yeah, hope we don't take six. Could have also kept up Kyodai just in case, in case they give their creature flying. But if we get to untap, I assume we win the game and our opponent agrees. Awesome. Close game here against Light Paws, which is a fun new build around commander as well. So yeah, overall, five color shrines, a powerful strategy. Some games simply boil down to getting your Sanctum of All and winning the game with it, but we don't have access to it every game since there's a limited number of tutor effects in the deck, so sometimes you do just get there with your shrine synergies, so there's still quite a bit of variety in the gameplay, which keeps it interesting. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.